Dominic, Rose and Tristan are loading up a wagon when a group of soldiers rides through the gate, led by Helene. She dismounts and begins talking with Bartel and Marco. Dom whispers. I have to hear what they're saying. I need to know if Ken is still alive. How are you going to sneak over there without the guards spotting you? Maybe one of us can distract him for you. Rose makes her way over to the guard, positioning herself so he turns his back to Dominic. What are you doing here? I wanted to take a break from all this hard work. She puts her hand on his gauntlet. And you looked a little lonely over here, with no one to talk to. You're flirting with me, aren't you? Nothing gets past you, does it? No. In fact, some of the other guards call me Gorin the Watcher. Tell me more. As the guard begins to assemble, Dominic moves closer to Bartel and Helene. Thank you, Rose. Looks like I sent the right person. A moment later, Dominic is pretending to scrub the wall near Helene, Bartel and Marco. It was a fool's errand. Kenna was gone before we ever got close. She made it. You weren't fast enough. Someone is working against us. Someone in this castle or in the villages nearby. Or right next to you. Those troops your father stationed here were poisoned. What? Father's going to be furious! We must act. What am I supposed to do? Burn down every village hut? Kill every servant? No. Killing Kenna's the only way. We did capture one of Kenna's men. A monk of Rajkur ruins, a most exquisitely resilient captive. That is no way to treat a prisoner! You mean traitor, Bartel. Take your time with this one, and find out what he knows about Kenna. Marco turns and leaves. Let's take our guest to the dungeon, shall we? The guard shoves the monk. Move! The monk stumbles and falls, and the guard starts kicking him brutally. On your feet, prisoner! Dominic dives between the guard and the monk, knocking aside the next blow. Stop it! You're gonna kill him! Hey! What in the three hills do you think you're doing? This man's a traitor to the crown. Maybe you want to join him in the dungeon? I can talk my way out of this. But should I appeal to Bartle's mercy or Helene's sense of justice? Dom turns to Helene. Please, I couldn't watch this cruelty. Regardless of his crimes, prisoners should be treated with dignity. I... I agree with this servant. Thank you. Guard, take the monk to the dungeon. There's no need for further abuse. Fine, I'll wait till I have all my tools. After I'm through with him, he'll be spilling his guts, literally and figuratively. Bartel strides off, and the soldier drags the monk away. Later, in the kitchens, Tristan grins. That was amazing, Dom. You're like the hero in one of the legends of the Five Kingdoms. I have to admit, I'm impressed. And this is just the beginning. I'm not going to let them kill that man. I'm going to save him. I'll help. I'm going to do everything I can, just like you, Dom. Tristan, we should be cautious. Come on, Rose. You're with us too, aren't you? There's just no stopping you, is there? Does that mean you're in? I'm in. Just promise me you won't tell Mother. She has enough to worry about. It's a deal. Hand over your weapons. Kenna and Gabriel reluctantly hand over their weapons. And your money. Val, we are not thieves. Taking money from captives doesn't always make you a thief. Sometimes it makes you a plunderer or a conqueror. They might be Leon's friends. Do you want to explain to him why we stole from people asking to see him? This patrol was much more interesting before we got paired together. Ah, this sort of thing is exactly why Leon insisted that patrols have at least one of his former soldiers. Blah, blah, blah. Don't take their money. I've got it. Come along, you two. As Kenna and Gabriel are led through the grasslands by the mercenaries, Kenna whispers to Gabriel. I thought you said we could trust Leon. Why not tell his people who we really are? A lot can change in two years. We are vulnerable, like a newborn. This world is not safe for us yet. Yeah, I caught that when they took our weapons. As far as I can tell, they are only being cautious. At least this is a chance to impress them. I'll need their support. Hey! Something on your mind? What are you two whispering about? 
Uh, just that you and your companion seem mismatched. Oh? Yes, one of you seems to have gotten the lion's share of the armour. He's got full armour, and you've only got woven leather to protect you. Pretty boy Jackson's just like all the rest of Leon's men. Castleborn. So cocky and prim with all their fancy armour and shiny swords from Stormhold. Between you and me, he spends hours trimming that beard. At least I take time to wash myself regularly. Some of us hold ourselves to higher standards. Val, you were not a soldier for Stormhold. Who? Oh, not me. I am a mercenary, through and through. Everything on my back, I pay for myself. I follow Severin. I've been in his outfit for 11 years now. Jackson here came with Leon and his company. He's still getting used to the mercenary life. But he misses having someone to bow to. Very funny, Val. I'm done fighting for kings. What have kings ever done but sit on their thrones, polishing their crowns, while men like me die in the mud for them? Does anyone really polish a crown? You blame the royalty, Jackson. I went away to war with promise that my family would be looked after. But when the war was lost, and I finally made it back, our home had been burned, and my wife and son had starved to death. All I can say is, I'm sorry about your family. That must have been devastating. I know what it's like to lose someone you care about. It was the hardest thing that I've ever had to endure. Not everyone can understand that. I'm glad you do. Believe me, I get it. Anyway, that's how I ended up in Leon's army. At least he keeps his promises. Well, the Fall Queen got her due. Jackson's just saw that he was on the losing side. The Fall Queen? You know the one. Got her head cut off when she tried to call all the kingdoms together. And so you call her the Fool Queen? Yeah. Got a problem with that? No. No problem at all. That's what I thought. Gabriel whispers to Kenna. I am surprised. I thought you would lose your temper. I don't like what she said. But we need these people on our side. Starting a fight wouldn't be smart. I guess you have grown up. Kenna enters the mercenaries' sprawling camp. All around her, armed men and women bustle about, sparring, drinking and laughing. There are hundreds here. I didn't expect so many. Two thousand, actually. The biggest mercenary force in the Five Kingdoms. Oh, this is a most impressive encampment. Yeah, it's good to return to the modest comforts of home. Tents, hot meals and lots of ale. Speaking of which, We've been out on patrol for too long. I need a drink. How about you, Jackson? You can't seriously want to stop for ale now. Not when we've got these two with us. Hate like they're going anywhere. Why not take a break? We earned it. Uh, typical mercenary. You talk so high and mighty, but you're one of us now. That may be, but at least I still have discipline. Discipline's for fools. Have a drink with me. We can play some knife games and our guest can wait. I don't know. Kenna whispers to Gabriel. This could be our chance to get to know them. To figure out what they're willing to fight for, other than gold. And how are you planning to persuade them to talk to us? That's easy. A little ale ought to do the trick. The drinks are on me. You want to buy us both a drink? We could all use a break. You hear that? I like the way this girl thinks. Very well, Val. You win again. Jackson leads the way to where the mercenaries have set up a barrel of ale and logs of fallen trees to sit on. Four pints. Four? Your woman is buying. You're drinking with us then. Yeah, she's not a monster, Gabriel. <laughs> Cheers. Is this wise? Gabriel. We might be slaughtered by mercenaries before nightfall. Let's at least have some fun before that. Besides, this is all part of getting to know them. The four of them join in a circle of mercenaries, sitting on the ground. One of the mercenaries twirls a knife in his hands, and then gives it to Jackson. What's the game tonight? Clinch? I'll pay. I'm wagering a day's pay. There you go, Jackson. You do know how to have fun every now and then. It's only fun if you win. 
Jackson hands over a bunch of coins to the mercenary, taking bets. What's this game? Flinch! You throw a knife as close to your own foot as possible. Winner is the one who gets the closest without bleeding. Jackson squares off against another mercenary. They both stand with their feet apart and throw their knives. Here goes. Jackson hits his own foot. Oh, damn it. Cheer up! You can always win back your money. I'm not concerned about my toe. It's barely a scratch, you baby. All that armor. You soldiers are all the same. It's like you've forgotten what it's like to bleed for a living. As the mercenaries continue the game, Val takes a big swig of her beer and turns. So, what's the story between you two? Are you siblings? Friends? Lovers? I beg your pardon? You don't have to beg, and you certainly don't need my pardon. I meant, how could you assume such a thing? Easy there, your lordship. Didn't expect you to be so high and mighty about it. Most men would be flattered. Well, what's the story then? What's going on between you two? What's going on is he's like a father to me. Old enough to be your father, sure, but that never stopped a man, did it? Believe me, it would stop Gabriel. The honorable kind, huh? Thought all honor left this land when the queen was killed. Just then, Jackson clears his throat and steps up to Kenna, Gabriel and Val. <clears throat> Enough gossiping, you three. I'm tired of stabbing myself in the foot. I want to see someone else bleed for a change. Will you play, girl? I'm going double or nothing on the next round. Come on, don't let me down. I think I'll play. I'm good with a knife. I'll play. Now that's what I like to hear. Too bad. You're going up against me. I can't pass up a shot taking Jackson's money. Why, you sneaky little... <clears throat> Have faith in Kenna. She's more than capable. She'd better be. Jackson hands Kenna his knife. She stands across from Val, who grins at Kenna and taps the flat side of her own knife against her palm. Are you sure you want to play? Toes don't grow back, you know. And your knife is as sharp as they come, so... Are you ready? Hmm. <laughs> of course. I'm always ready. Good. Because there's no backing out now. Who should go first? Why don't you go first? Yes. Why don't I? Val smirks and squares her shoulders. She winks at Kenna and tosses the knife in the air. She catches the knife by the handle and immediately hurls it towards the ground, not breaking eye contact the entire time. Ha! Kenna looks at the knife. The blade is embedded in the ground, barely an inch from her boot. Your turn. Kenna holds the knife in her hand, hefting the weight of it. <sighs> Relax, Kenna. Just throw the knife already! Take your time, Kenna. Kenna locks eyes with Val. She smirks at Kenna as she exhales slowly and flicks her wrist, releasing the knife. The knife lands in the ground with a thud so close to her boot that it scratches the leather. Can't get much closer than that. After measuring the position of the two knives, both Jackson and Gabriel confirm that Kenna's knife is closer. I win. We win. Hmm. See there, Jackson? She's good luck for you. You finally won. It was no big deal. I knew I liked you. You're all right, Kenna. Thank you. Seems like you folks like to gamble. Everything we do is gambling. Just sometimes you pay with coin and sometimes you pay with your life. At least this way I believe in what I bleed for. Money. Have you no sense of honor left? Uh, not really. Unless there's a profit to be made from having honor, then I'd reconsider. Very funny. Come along now. No more delays. We better get you to Leon. The mercenaries lead Kenna to a tent at the centre of the camp. A familiar man stands inside, overlooking a table covered in maps and plans. Travelers here. They say they know you, Leon. Leon's eyes go wide when he sees Kenna and Gabriel, but he quickly covers it up. Travelers? You let this eat one walk to the heart of our camp? We took their weapons and they wanted to talk to you, like I said. Give us a minute. Jackson and Val leave. Leon turns to Gabriel furiously. You brought her here? You're supposed to be our bodyguard. Do you have any idea what danger you put her in? The entire world is dangerous for her now. Obviously we had hoped for a better reception than this. A better reception? This isn't the Grand Hall, Gabriel. 
That life is over for all of us. There's no returning to it. Leon, please hear me out. You were once a fearless warrior. You can be again. You were the defender of my family, of our people. Help us now. Weren't you listening? I'm not the same man. I've done things, things you can't even imagine. Nothing that you can't be forgiven for. Remember who you once were, before these terrible times. You're two years too late for that speech. It's not too late. I have close to 250 troops who pledged to help me retake Stormholt. You do? You sound impressed. I am, but it doesn't change anything. The best I could do now is sneak you both out before the others realize who you are. I'm sorry, but I can't do no more. You, you remind me so much of your mother. I wish we had more time. As Leon opens the tent flap to leave, Kenna sees an enormous man waiting on the other side. What the hell's Leon? You may in without me. This is personal, Severin. I was just meeting with an old friend. Old friend, my ass. You're an awful liar, Leon, and I hate being lied to. Severin reaches down and grabs Kenna's chin. You're the queen. I know a royal pampered face when I see one. I... You're mistaken. Am I? Severin holds up a crumpled wanted poster with Kenna's face sketched on it. You know the Blood King. Luther Nevrakis. I... Well, he knows you. Turns out, his will put a bounty on your head, your majesty. Turning you in will be the easiest coin I've ever made. <laughs>